We continue now at the top of Daf Pei Beis Amid Beis and Mesech Eskitin. This is Gitin Daf 82b. The Gemara is in the middle of Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda's version of the Machlokis, Rabbi Eliezer and the Chachamim. According to Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda, the Machlokis, Rabbi Eliezer and the Chachamim is specifically in a situation of al Manas, meaning to say the husband says to his wife that I'm divorcing you on the condition that you don't marry so and so. Rabbi Eliezer matter l'chol adam chutz meyoso ish. Rabbi Eliezer says she is mutter to marry anyone except for that person because that was the condition of the get. The Chachamim Moser, but the Chachamim say she's prohibited because the Chachamim say such a get is not considered a good divorce at all. And the Gemara says, My time is Rabbi Eliezer. What's the reason of Rabbi Eliezer? Just like any other condition. You're just placing, placing a condition on the divorce, and that's fine. The Rabbanon and the Rabbanon will respond to Rabbi Eliezer, and they say, In general, a normal Tanai, that doesn't leave something off of the get. She's still completely divorced from the husband. But over here, there's something being left off. She's not completely separated from her husband because she's still prohibited to this particular individual. And the Gemara continues, Umas nisin kimna Now, according to our Mishnah, our Mishnah says that the machlokas between Rabbi Eliezer and the Chacham is by a case of chutz, where the husband says to his wife, you're divorced and permitted to every man except for so-and-so. My time with Rabbi Eliezer, according to that approach, what's the reason of Rabbi Eliezer, that even by a case of chutz, the divorce is okay? And the Gemara explains, Amar Rabbi Yana mishum zake nechot. Rabbi Yana said in the name of one of a particular elder, Amar Kratz, because the pasuk says v'yotza mi beiso v'halcha v'aisel ishacher. By divorce, it says that she leaves his house and goes to another man. And we understand from that pasuk, according to Rabbi Yezer, afilo lo hitira el leishacher harizu megureshes. Even if this divorce is only permitting her to one other person, that's still considered to be a good divorce. The Rabbanon and the Rabbanon respond, Hai ish lechol ish ve'ish. When it says over here, she goes leishacher, it doesn't mean to one man, it means to any man, she has to be permitted to all men. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi Yochanan, and Rabbi Yochanan says, time with Rabbi Eliezer, mehacha. the reason of Rabbi Eliezer that he allows it when the husband says chutz, chutz from so-and-so is from the following, from, from the following Pasuk, V'isha grusha me'isha lo ikachu, it says in the Pasuk, it's talking about the fact that Kohanim are, allow, are not allowed to marry divorcees, it says a woman that is divorced from her husband, so they're not allowed to take as a wife, and we understand that Pasuk to mean, according to Rabbi Eliezer, afilu lo niskarsha ela me'isha nifsula minakuna, even if she's only divorced from her husband, meaning it's a separation from her husband, but not necessarily not necessarily permitted to others, that's still enough to consider her a divorcee, and she is disqualified from the kahuna. Alma Havigita, you see that it is considered an effective get, even though it's not a full separation from the husband. But the Rabbanon respond, Isr Kahuna Shani. It's different when you're talking about the prohibition from Kohanim, because even a disqualified get is able to render a woman that she's disqualified from the from the kahuna. And Rashi explains, Ella Meisha, even if she's only divorced from her husband, meaning, meaning, let's say he says to her, you're divorced from me, but you're not mutter to anyone else. That's the case of Reach Haget, the scent of a get, which disqualifies by Kahuna. Now, from the fact that this kind of a get disqualifies her from the Kahuna, Alma Get, who you see that it is in fact a get. And over here, where he's permitting her to all men except for so and so, so, also in that case, she'd be permitted to these other men. And the, the Rabbonin say back, Isra Kuhuna Shani, when it comes to the Isra Kuhuna, that's different. Shariba ben Akasa mitzvah Yiseris. There are many mitzvahs when it comes to the Kohanim, and therefore we're more strict in that regard. But that does not necessarily mean that it would be a good Gerishin if the husband says to the wife, Chutz mi ploni. And the Gemara continues, Boy, Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba asks the following question, What would be the halacha in Kiddushin in such a case? Meaning to say, let's say a man would say to a woman, that you're Mekudeshes to me, and you're usher to all other men except for so-and-so. You're still going to be permitted to so-and-so. And the Gemara explains, and That would be a question according to Rabbi Eliezer, who permits that when it comes to get. And that would be a question according to the Rabbanon, who don't permit it by get. It could be a question according to Rabbi Eliezer as follows. Rabbi Eliezer only says it's a good Gerishin in such a case, as we brought from Sukkim. But over here, you just, over here, you need need to have a full Kenyan. It's not a full Kenyan if he says to her that you're prohibited from all men except for so-and-so, and therefore maybe Rabbi Eliezer would say it's not going to be effective by Kedushin. Oh, Dilmar, maybe Vyatsa Vahaisa, maybe we compare the Vyatsa, the, the Gerish and the divorce, to the Vahaisa, to the Kedushin, and since they're compared to one another, according to Rabbi Eliezer, just like it's effective by Gitin, so too it would be effective by Kedushin. And the Gemara continues, Rabbanan. we can have a similar question according to the Rabbanan. Arkan lo ka'ami Rabbanan, ha'chela de'bu'inan krisas 
could be the Rabbanon only say it's not good by Gerishin, because it needs to be a crisis, it needs to be a full separation. Aval Hasam Kenyan called to, but when it comes to Kedushin, maybe any, any amount of a Kenyan would be effective, even if she's still permitted to a particular individual. O Dilma Vyatsa Vahaisar, maybe we say no, again, Gerishin is compared to Kedushin, and so therefore, just like by Gerishin, according to the Rabbanon, it's no good, so to by Kedushin, it would not be good. And the Gemara continues, Levasr di Boile, after he had this question, Hadir Pasha, then he answered the question and he said, Bein le Rabbi Eliezer, Bein le Rabbonin, whether you're following Rabbi Eliezer or the Rabbonin, but inon v'yotza v'hoisa. We say that it has to be v'yotza v'hoisa, meaning we compare the divorce to the Kiddushin, and therefore, according to Rabbi Eliezer, since it's a good divorce, it would be a good Kiddushin, and according to the Rabbonin, since it's not a good divorce, it would not be a good Kiddushin. And the Gemara continues, Amar Abay Abay says, Im Timsa Lomar Isolid Rabbi Ab. If you're going to say that we follow Rabbi Abba's answer, and we say according to Rabbi Eliezer that it would be a good Kedushin, meaning if a man says to a woman, Hareat Muteris, Hareat Mekudeshesli, rather, if he says that I'm having a Kedushin with you and you're usher to all men except for so and so, if you're going to say that Rabbi Abba is correct, that according to Rabbi Eliezer, that is a good Kedushin. So what about the following case? Bo Ruven Vikitsha Chutzmi Shimon. We're talking here where Ruven and Shimon are brothers. And Reuven comes and he's Makadesh, a woman, but with the exception of Shimon, meaning Shimon is still allowed to have a Kiddushin with his wife, with Reuven's wife. Uva Shimon v'kidsha chutz mi Reuven. And now Shimon comes along, and he also is Makadesh, but he says with the exception of Reuven. So now she'd be married to both Reuven and Shimon. Vameisu shneim, and then they both die. Misyavemes lelevi. So says Abaya, there would still be Yibam with Levi, even though she's married to both of Levi's brothers. She's married to both Reuven and Shimon, and we'll see that's not really true in a moment, but even though it seems she'd be married to both Reuven and Shimon, but still, there could be Yibam with Levi. I don't say that it's a problem of the wife of two deceased brothers. There's a halacha that we only have Yibam when one of the brothers, when she has Yibam only because one of the brothers died, that was her husband, and then she had to do Yibam. But if you have a situation where they both were two brothers, Brothers, where she has Yibam coming, so to speak, from two brothers, then we say that's a problem of Esha Shnei Mesim, and there is no Yibam in that case. And now Abai explains why we don't say it's Esha Shnei Mesim in this case. My time, and what's the reason? Kidushe de Ruven Ahanu. The reason is because when Ruven comes along and says that he's being Makadisher with the exception of Shimon, that actually is effective, and Shimon is still permitted. However, Kidushe de Shimon Lo Ahanu, but when Shimon comes along and he's Makadisher and he says with the exception of Ruven, that Kidushin is not effective at all because Shimon hasn't added anything. Thing. She was already permitted to Shimon before, and now when Shimon's Makadisher, she was already prohibited to all other men, and Shimon hasn't added anything. He hasn't prohibited her to Ruvain. He's also saying, Chutz mi Ruvain, so he hasn't effectively done anything, and his Kedushin is nothing. And essentially, Abai is saying that in such a case, really, she only has a Kedushin with Ruvain. She doesn't have a Kedushin with Shimon at all, and that's why it's not a problem of Eisha Shnei Mesim. And so the Gemara continues, Ve'elo Eisha Shnei Mesim Hechem Ashkachasla. So according to that, how could we have a case of Eisha Shnei Mesim? It could be as follows. Kegon Shabo Ruven Vikitsha Chutzmi Shimon. It could be, let's say, Ruven comes and he's Makadisher with the exception of Shimon. So Shimon is still permitted. Uva Shimon Vikitsha Stam. So and then Shimon comes along and he's just Makadisher and he says prohibited to all men. The Kiddushi Ruven Ahanu Lemesra Alma. Because the Kiddushin of Ruven, that was effective to make her prohibited to all other men except for Shimon. The Kiddushi the Shimon Ahanu Lemesra Ruven. And then the Kiddushin of Shimon, that came along, that was effective to prohibit her on Ruven. That could be a situation of a and Rashi explains the more typical case of Eish Shnei Mesim, Ve'ena Nikori Ba Eish Shnei Mesim La'osra La'levi. Again, in the first scenario, it's not called Eish Shnei Mesim. She's not prohibited to Levi, the third brother, Mibnei Zeka Shnei Yevamin, because she's coming from an obligation of two Yevamin, of two of the of two brothers. That's not true here. The Tanan be Yevamas, because we learned in the mission of Yevamas, here is the case where it's Eish Shnei Mesim. Shlosha Achin Vamei Sechar Mehem. Let's say you have three brothers, and one of them dies. Viosa Hasheini Maimor Be Yevamto. Now, the second brother, he begins the process process of Yibam, which is called Maimer, of a mason, then he dies, so in that case already it's considered like she's coming from, bro- from both brothers. So then we say there's Chalitza, not Yibam, Shanamar, Vameis, Achad, Mehem, Yivama, Yavu, Olet, says one of them dies, and then there's Yibam, Misha, Allah, Zeik, Asiyavam, Echad, that's only if she's coming because of one of the, of the brother-in-laws, Velo, Shalaz, Zeik, Ashnei, Yivam, and it can't be coming from two of them, Kegon, Zul, like in this particular case, because again, over here, in the classic case, the typical case of Eish, Shnei, Mason, she was married to 
one of the brothers he died. Then she began the process of Yivam with the second brother, and then he died. Now to go to the third brother, that's already Eishah Shnei Mesim. Shadayin lo yotz to mizek as Yivu me hamesa rishon. She hasn't yet left the first Yivam. Then Yivam a yotz to mizek kasel babia, because only an act of relations really takes away, uh, really takes away that obligation of Yivam. Veni tosvala zek as machmas mamor shel sheni. And now the mimer of the second brother that creates another zeka, and so therefore that's the case again of of Eishah Shnei Mesim. She doesn't do Yivam in that case. She only does chalitza. So here, Abba is teaching us, Even if you say like Rabbi Abba, that both of the Kiddushans are Kiddushin, in this case, again, where you say Chutz, that's not Eish Hashnei Mesim, if Shimon's Kiddushin didn't add anything. My time, what's the reason Kiddushin did Ruven Ahanu? Because the Kiddushin of Ruven was effective, but the Kiddushin of Shimon did nothing. Because if he just said Chutz Mei Ruven, he never prohibited her anyone that she was mutter to before. Sharei Asur of Omedis Yala called Chutzmi Reuven. She was already Asur to everyone except for Reuven. And then Shimon comes along and says, you're Asur to everyone except for Reuven. He hasn't really added anything. And so that's why Shimon's Kedushin would not be good. And so then the Gemara finds the case where we say Kedushin, the Kedushin of Shimon is good and, uh, and it would be considered Eishah Shnei Mesim. And the Gemara continues, Boya, Baya, Baya asks the following question. Amar Lof, he says to her, Harei HaMuteris L'chol Adam, your mutter to everyone, Chutz Mei Ruven V'Shimen, except for Ruven and Shimon. The Chazer of Yom Rala, but then he says to her, Lu Ruven V'Shimen, that you are permitted to Ruven and Shimon. So Ma, what's the Allah in that case? Mi Amrin An Ma'i Do'as Hashar, do we say that what he means to say is, that which he prohibited, meaning Ruven and Shimon, who initially he was not permitting her to, now he's permitting her to Ruven and Shimon as well. O Dilmor, maybe what he was saying was, Ma'i Do'as Hashar, O Ma'i Do'as Hashar, that which he initially prohibited is now permitted, Ruven and Shimon are now permitted. Permitted, but that which he initially permitted, all other people are now prohibited. And the Gemara says, Imtim Salom, and if you will say as an answer to this question, and we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Pei Gimel Amid Aleph.